Hey, up viewers and viewers, my name is General Red Stratus, and welcome back to So You Being Hunted, episode 455 now. So, we're back here with our new challenge, the Crow in Toe Challenge. So, last episode we started it off, and uh, basically it was just, uh, you know, easing things in, and uh, getting prepared, picking up uh, various objects and items, weapons, things like that, ammo, blah blah blah, you know, and all that. We do need to find more bandages, though, because um, otherwise it's going to be a bit difficult, uh, especially once we actually get a... Um, Scarecrow in tow with us. Otherwise, um, well, the thing is, once we've got a Scarecrow in tow and we're going to pick up device pieces on the other islands, it's going to get challenging very, very quickly. Um, with, of course, it's in all likelihood the Scarecrow attracting robots from friggin' miles around who are going to be shooting at us. So uh, we'll see how long I last in this one. Let me just get rid of these guys so I can raid the village. Um, check in case there's anything. If they've got any shotgun ammo, that would be good. Ah, oh, look at this guy. What a pleasant chap. He has exactly what we're looking for. That just gives me a bit of uh, ammo to replenish what I've lost. Uh, it's probably worth us taking the axe as well, in case we need to fight. Uh, let me just put that there, actually. Um, chocolate biscuits I'll just eat straight off the bat. And um, bandages, that's what we need, really. Ideally, anyway. Um, how are we doing, actually, food-wise? We've got a couple of flasks of tea. We'll take an extra pie, and that should do us for the time being. Um... Hmm, mix of revolver ammo to replenish that, which I just used up. That's fantastic. Um, God, but you could really give me um, some, uh, what do you call them, bandages, rags. That's what I need right now. So, ah, there we go. That's what we need right there. Eat the mints. There's more freaking hunters showing up. All right, we'll tell you what, we're just going to select an island at random. Oh, my God, there's a fair few hunters over there, and there's ones over there. There's dogs. Everything's kicking off. So let's um, just make our way towards one of the jetties, and then we'll get going, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, by the looks of it, we're going to be heading for the South Island first. Allow me just to get a weapon out, so I'm ready and good to go. Okay, yes. Whew, right, so, off to a little bit of an action-packed start already, but I'm sure it'll be good. So, um, I'm hoping, actually, now that I think about it, I didn't think about this in the last episode, but hopefully some of the biomes that I've set will allow scarecrows to actually spawn on them. Because come to think of it, I do have an island that's set to a mountain biome. Can you get scarecrows on mountain biomes? Because mountain biomes don't typically have a lot of fields on them, do they? Right, well, we'll have to see. And we're in. Here we are, South Island. So this one I've set to a castle biome, clearly, judging by the colour scheme. Um, so we should get scarecrows on this one, hopefully. That is something, I, like I say, I hadn't thought about when I actually set the biomes. Probably would have been better to actually set them all to rural or fens or industrial, because those are the ones where you do predominantly get fields, and therefore you have a greater chance of actually spawning scarecrows in. Oh, there's a field right here, actually. Uh, well, on this one there is at least. No scarecrow, though. At least none that I see. Um, hmm. That's an issue, isn't it? Um, I, mean, I suppose what we could always do at the moment is just explore around, identify where the device pieces are, just get a feel for where they are, then find the Scarecrow and see if we can get them in tow with us. I mean, maybe if we wander away from this field, one will spawn eventually. That's always possible, isn't it? Uh, let's see. Church. There. Okay. In the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, hope you guys are all doing well out there and that you are looking forward to seeing how far I get in this particular challenge. Especially uh, Splicey on Charlie, if you're still out there watching this. Apologies, it probably took me years to get around to this challenge suggestion that you made, but uh, better late than never, I guess. <laughs> right. You know, something actually interesting, um, this is actually completely unrelated, uh, on an unrelated topic, that uh, I was thinking about recently. I was thinking about uh, games that I played in childhood, you know, which is a subject that I have talked about before, uh, here on the Serie Being Hunted series, and probably elsewhere, too. But, um... I was thinking about uh, childhood games that I used to play, and I was thinking again about uh, edutainment games, because uh, I've talked about these before, right? I talked about Zumbinis, I think it was, of quite a few episodes ago, and people in the comments were like, oh yeah, I can remember edutainment games that I played in my youth, uh, whether in school or just, you know, in the, their own time. And so, you know, people were sort of naming quite a few, especially ones I'd never actually even heard of. Um, so I was kind of checking all them out um, quite a few weeks ago, but more recently in the past couple of days I was also thinking about a couple of other edutainment games that I'd completely forgotten about from my childhood, but which I just remembered them recently. For some reason they just came back to my mind. 
And um, certainly if you're here in the UK, uh, you'll have probably heard of a company called Dorling Kindersley. Now, Dorling Kindersley is a multinational company, but I believe it's British in origin. So probability is people actually in other countries, probably America, possibly Australia, places like that, probably will have heard of it as well. Dorling Kindersley basically is a British multinational publishing company uh, that specialises in like reference books for children and adults. And when I say reference books, I mean um, kind of like illustrated reference books with lots of pictures and things like that in them. That's their specialty. But um, I remember back in the day uh, when I was a kid in the 1990s, they also did specialise a little bit or did branch out into um, things like computer um, edutainment games, I guess you'd call them, because they're sort of games, basically. And actually, remember, I had a couple of Darling Kindersley ones um, back in the day, edutainment games. Um, so, one of them that I remember was a um, an edutainment game called uh, Dinosaur Hunter, which... I don't really remember actually playing that much of. I think it was one of those kind of edutainment games, which basically, basically what it was is it's you hunt for dinosaur fossils, and it's like setting this big sort of museum, and you just sort of explore. It's like a point and click, and you just sort of go around and you explore this museum, and you learn about dinosaurs, things like that. But I can sort of still vaguely remember it from my childhood, and honestly, I don't remember playing it that often. I think it was one of those things, like I say, that I played it maybe once or twice and then never really played it again because I just kind of got bored of it. But there was a second Dorling in Kindersley Edutainment game that I did have, which I did play a lot more often. Uh, I think it was something like my first Amazing History Explorer. So you know me. I'm a big history buff and all that. And, um, you know, that game probably did contribute to my... well, to the, the, the development of my interest in history as a kid. So basically... Um, a history explorer um, actually had a storyline to it. It had a storyline where it was kind of like a, a professor or something who built a time machine had been trapped in the past somewhere, and so you had to go through a series of time periods and basically like, find all these objects or things or something. And then once you find them all, you basically rescue the dude, the professor dude. Um, but the thing about it was that. So I, I'm trying to remember what time periods were there. I think there was. I think I can remember what they were. I think one of them was ancient Egypt. Then I think there was ancient Greece. There was also ancient China. That was one. I think medieval Europe, or you know, medieval Europe in general, was another. Uh, I think there was also a section that was on the Incas in uh, Peru. Incas. Um, what came after that, though? I think there was one on. The Industrial Revolution, so like 1850s-ish in the in Britain, and then after that, I think it was like the 1920s, Roaring Twenties kind of. So there were those time periods there. In fact, actually, there's one I've forgotten, the bloody Roman Empire. That was another one. They had a section on that. But basically, what it was is you hop into a time machine, you go to a selected time period, and in essence, it comes up with like a big map with like lots of things, lots of graphics on it that you can click on to learn about aspects of that period of history. So like life, you know, we'd say the Roman Empire, um, life in the Inca civilization, things like this, basically. And you would um, you basically do that. You'd, you'd basically click on things, learn things about them, and every so often something that you click on would have the object that you're looking for. And bit by bit, you'd piece everything together. You'd find this dude, this professor who you're looking for. But yeah. I just remember that one more than the dinosaur explore, uh, dinosaur hunter one, because the dinosaur hunter one, I didn't like. I said I didn't really play it very often. It just didn't quite grab my attention. I don't think, whereas the uh, the history one did, because the history one was a bit more of an adventure, and the history one also had a few mini games in it as well. I seem to remember a uh, mini game in it being like a diver going down to a treasure chest at the bottom of a um, at the bottom of the sea, like a cartoon diver that is, um, and. I also seem to recall um, another mini game, which was basically just creating a picture with lots of static objects. At least I, I seem to recall that. So yeah, Dorling Kindersley Edutainment Games, ladies and gentlemen. I'd pretty much forgotten about them that I had those two until recently. Um, could have talked about them in my past Edutainment game episode, or the one where I was talking about Zoom Beanies or whatever it was. Oh man, maybe I'll still pick up Zoom Beanies on Steam, the remastered version of it. 
maybe one day, who knows. Just for a bit of nostalgia, because um, it might be quite interesting. All right, well, we're back to this. We've come full circle on this island, and um, there's still no scarecrow here. Uh, you see, the problem is I only set the scarecrows to um, one bar on the spawn rate. Now I'm thinking maybe I should have set them slightly higher, maybe to two bars, because otherwise we're going to be wandering around these islands for quite a bit. Or maybe actually what we need to do is, I don't know, go to an island, explore around. If we can't find a scarecrow, zip back, go to another island, try that one, maybe. All right, well, uh, maybe we can come back to this island later on and just see what the deal is. Otherwise it means we are going to be around for a while with this challenge, but uh, I'm sure, however long it takes do it. So yeah, uh, let me know in the comments. Did any of you guys play any Dorling Kindersley entertain uh, edutainment games back in the day? Because it'd be interesting actually to know and find out. Um, am I the only one who really remembers those? Because they're probably quite niche things now. Because I imagine Dorling Kindersley ed edutainment games, they're probably, you know, they've probably been consigned now to the dustbin of video game history. I'd be amazed uh, if there's quite a few people who even remember them. I'd be curious to know what their sales figures for those things were back in the day. Because I think there were, you know... Um, in fact, actually, now that I think about it, I was trying to think whether there were more Dawn and Kindersley edut Edutainment games that I remember. And now that I think about it, yes, there was another one that I did have, which I've completely forgotten about, and I've literally just remembered right now. Castle Explorer. Was it called Castle Explorer? I think there was. There was. I'm sure there was one called Castle Explorer, which I had, and that was another one that actually had a storyline to it. So basically in that one, it was um, basic education all about uh, medieval castles and life within them. But the um, the story behind it was that your player character, again, it was, it was like a point and click, essentially, of exploring a castle. Um, but the story about it was that you were a spy who has to get into the castle and find out loads of information, um, things like this. But what was actually interesting about that one, from what I remember, is that had full motion video in it. It actually had actors playing characters. So there was like one actor who was playing the Baron of the castle, and then there were like a couple of other characters. Uh, I think there was one who was like a woman who was like the cook. Uh, there was a man who was like the blacksmith, something like that. I'm pretty sure there was one, another dude who was the alchemist. So that one was kind of unique in that sense for its full motion video. But like I say, it, it was kind of point and click. And in some ways it was actually similar to History Explorer in that essentially when you, by exploring the castle, what it would do is it would give you like this big sort of 3D cross section of a castle and you could like click on areas to learn about more. And there were like uh, areas you could click on which would reveal like things that you could learn about. And so you just learn about it, and then you'd locate uh, where the characters were located, and you'd go, and you could, like, talk to them, learn things about life in the castle, about their sort of medieval professions, stuff like this. And then, of course, you get to, like, the Baron's Chambers, where if you're able to sneak in, you can sort of, like, open his chest, I think, and you can find, like, a secret passage uh, that leads out of the castle. So... That actually, now that I think about it, Castle Explorer is one I do recall playing a fair bit. I'm amazed, actually, I forgot that one. So that takes my total of um, Dorling Kindersley ed uh, Edutainment games up to three that I played when I was a kid. Yeah. Bit, uh, you know, dorky slightly games when you're a young kid and all, you know, all your friends at school are saying, oh, you know, I'm playing the new Half-Life and things like this. And then you're saying, oh, I'm playing my first amazing history, Explorer. <laughs> but, uh, no. <laughs> That's why I, uh, you know, have grown up to be where I am. <laughs> to uh, give a bit of a humble brag. There we are. I shouldn't really brag. It's a very, it's a most unbecoming trait, ladies and gentlemen. All right, I need to find another jetty because um, the South Island wasn't really very promising. I really do hope that scarecrows are able to spawn on that island. Otherwise, that effectively means that there will be a point in this challenge where I get soft locked. But if that's the case, then I'll just, I'll just do this challenge for as far as I can take it. And if it does reach a point, a point where basically I just feel like I'm not able to progress any further with it, then we can just end it there if need be. Hmm. Lovely. Or alternatively, you know, amass as much ammo as possible and then just go out in a blaze of glory. That too would probably be a uh, nice way of ending it, I do think. All right. Um, let me just go around here. Um, let's see what the deal is. 
Man, I wonder if you could buy second-hand copies of those old Dorling Kindersley Edutainment games on, I don't know, eBay or something. I mean, I doubt they'd really work with modern systems, but who knows, eh? Right, let's see what island this is. This is the east. Yeah, we'll go to the east and see what the deal is there. Alright, we're in here. Uh, this is looking a lot flatter. Is this a fens biome that I set it to? I think it probably is. Uh, in which case, there's a higher chance of scarecrows actually spawning on this one. So we might be able to start our challenge properly uh, over here, potentially. Let's just take a quick look at the lie of the land from up here on top of this ridge. But then we'll probably start wrapping the episode up because we have been going for a decent amount of time, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's see, there's possibly a fenced field off over there which could be to our advantage. Um, yes, there is a Scarecrow in that, so Scarecrows can spawn on this island. Okay, that's good. So, what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this one up here. So, I haven't really made any progress in this one, but having said that, we have, we've had a good conversation, you know, and I think that's probably good for an episode. So, even though we are doing a challenge, this actually turned out to be more of a podcast-style episode, didn't it? In which case, uh, that's fine. Um, so, next episode, we'll start trying to clear this island out. We'll get a scarecrow in tow, and then we'll see how uh, far we can get before we get absolutely shot to pieces. So, yeah, hope you enjoyed, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you'll join me for some more, in, you know, in due course. Facebook and Twitter links down below, along with a link to my propagandist channel for anyone interested. And if you enjoyed, a like is always appreciated. And, of course, let me know in the comments. Um, if you guys remember any good Dorling Kindersley ed edutainment games uh, from back in the day? Did you play any of the ones that I mentioned? Either Dinosaur Hunter, uh, First Amazing History Explorer, or Castle Explorer? Let me know. But than that, I'm signing off now. Goodbye, everybody. It's quite far off. So it's like this here. Uh, maybe it's like a running jump at it, maybe? Yep. Oh. Wow, okay. I glitched through the propeller itself. But I am actually on the wing. I'm assuming I was meant to do that. Let's have a look here. What's the deal with this aeroplane? Whoa. Oh. We got pistols. Pistol is, it looks like it. Okay, so I was meant to do this. Nice, I've got weapons back at least, and now I should. Well, I say should, I don't think I'm going to be able to actually. I might be able to go sort of back and at least probably deal with the dudes, right? There, that. Um, so the question now 